What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. You may not know me as Boogie to 988. You may know me as my character Francis, who gets really angry all the time and breaks stuff. But, but that's okay. I'm just glad you know me at all. A lot of people have asked me to draw my life story, and it's kind of sad. But I'd like to do that for you now. I grew up in the southwestern part of Virginia in a small town called St. Paul, and it only had about a thousand people in it, and it was part of the coal mining belt here in America, and of course my dad mined coal. It was a very hard job, which made him very sad, and my mother was a teacher, but she was always very sad, and not only was she sad, but she was pretty angry about her life and everything that had happened up to then. We had a medium-sized family. I was the youngest and the smallest, and uh, my brother Brian, he was the oldest. He was pretty cool. And my sister Carla, she was kind of crazy, actually, and eventually she ran away, and my brother went off to college, which left me alone at the age of nine with my crazy, angry, depressed family, which really kind of sucked. So my dad was almost always at work, and that left me alone with my mother, who was always sad all the time. and. Sometimes she'd get really angry and she'd scream at me and that happened almost every day and sometimes she'd hit me and that happened every day too. But enough about that. My brother used to tell me that my dad was a pretty laid back guy and he was kind of fun but by the time I came around all dad liked to do was drink and he liked to drink Pass Blue Ribbon and he drank like 20 or 30 of them a day and that's pretty much all he did. And that's why if you ever meet me, you don't get to buy me a beer, you buy me a Mountain Dew instead. As a kid, I was always pretty much sick. Either it was my allergies or chicken pox or something going on, but I pretty much was always sick. And because I didn't get much physical activity, I also got really fat. Eventually, all that drinking and smoking and coal mining caught up to my dad. Something went wrong in his brain. They called it alcoholic seizures, though. It pretty much was just like a stroke and it left him like a stroke victim. He couldn't work anymore so it was up to me and my my mother to take care of him and all he did was pretty much sit in his recliner and stare at the wall. He couldn't really communicate, he couldn't hear because he was deaf from working in the mines and he couldn't talk because of his stutter and that's really really sad. Then my poor mother who was already pretty sad and already pretty angry got even sadder and got even angrier and the bad stuff she did started happening more often and, and the good stuff she did kind of disappeared. And as you can imagine, all this made me really, really sad. I didn't really have any friends at school either, which kind of sucked. The kids at school would call me fat or, or ugly or gross. Uh, four eyes, of course, because eventually I got glasses and man, that was hard. And life just kind of went on like that for years. I was always pretty sad and people were always kind of mean to me and mom was always kind of crazy and dad was very sick. But eventually I got an opportunity to go to a pre-collegiate program called Upward Bound. And that made me really happy because I met a lot of people there who didn't think I was fat and didn't think I was gross and didn't think I was weird. But they thought I was cool and funny. And all these new friends, they liked the same stuff I did. They liked video games, and they liked gaming, they liked board games, and they liked Dungeons and Dragons, and I got to use my very first computer, and we would play these games together, and I even met my very first girlfriend in Upward Bound, and it changed my life. It changed my life forever for the better, because I wasn't sad all the time. It made me happy. And eventually it was senior year and I had all these great new friends and even though nobody in my high school really liked me, I, we shared all these great things like books, you know, they taught me to read and I started reading Douglas Adams and I started reading Stephen King's The Dark Tower series and Kurt Vonnegut and, and it was such a good time and it was the best year of school that I had. And eventually I headed off to university, the University of Virginia at Wise, also known as Clinch Valley College, and I thought there, that is where my future lies. Eventually the girl that I met in Upward Bound joined me at college and we dated and we thought we'd end up getting married one day but something went wrong. We started fighting all the time. She was angry and I was angry and we were both hurt and we thought we would make it work but we just couldn't. And you know that's okay because that's how it was supposed to be. So I was really sad for a while and I flunked out of school 
and I wasn't really able to concentrate. But my brother gave me the opportunity to move to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and reinvent myself and reinvent my life. And you know what? I agreed to come. And it was one of the best decisions of my life because they had this awesome computer lab and they taught me how to code for the internet and I played this card game called Magic the Gathering and I met all of these great people who loved the game and loved gaming and loved video games and loved computers and I made more friends than I'd ever had in my entire life and I loved the city I lived in and I was so happy. So I started using what I learned to start coding for the web, and I started doing web design, which was really fun, even though sometimes I ended up with clients that I didn't like working for who did kind of dirty stuff. But I had found my home. I was self-employed, I was making money, I was playing magic, and me and my friends, we would travel all over the world to play magic, all over the country, and it was great, but eventually that came to an end. You see, I was still pretty sad, and I was still pretty messed up, and I still got sick pretty often. And unfortunately for me, something went bad with my legs. I got a condition called lymphedema, and a very mean doctor tried to tell me that he was going to take that leg, but I wouldn't let him. So I was stuck at Fayetteville. I couldn't really walk very well, and I couldn't really exercise very much, but that was okay because I had some good friends and we go out to eat all the time, uh, but eating out all the time made me fatter, and being fatter made me sadder, and I get more depressed and more fat, till eventually I was fatter than I'd ever been. But that was just the beginning of health problems for my family because my dad passed and he died of cancer. And that made my mom really, really sad and really angry. And then we got some more bad news. She fell and broke her leg and that leg would never heal. So she was unable to work. And if you thought she was crazy before, that pushed her over the edge. And all this bad luck, and all this poor health, and all this misfortune made me sadder and angrier than I had ever been. And I decided not to leave my house, and I didn't, for almost seven years. And during that period of time, I was so sad and so depressed, it became very difficult to work. And the internet became bigger and stronger, and more and more people were coding for it, and web pages were cropping up, and the money that I was making began to disappear. And I became poorer and poorer and poorer until eventually there was nothing left. So I just kind of tried to survive and it was really hard, but my roommate supported me and he kept me alive and eventually something new and exciting was going to happen to me. And that exciting thing was YouTube. Uh, first, I really didn't know what to make of it or if I should make anything at all. I started making these videos in which I ate french fries and acted stupid and I knew everyone would call me fat, so lol, that was the joke. And people did. They called me fat. But not everybody. Some people were kind of nice, just like those people in Upward Bound. And that made me feel really good. So one day I'm sitting around and I'm doing the different character voices that I do and I decide that my character, Francis, would have to get hacked in World of Warcraft and he'd get really mad about it and smash a keyboard in his face and this cool guy by the name of Ray William Johnson saw the video and he said, cool, 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 and he showed it to the world. And that changed my life. Nobody was really watching my channel before, but then after Ray J mentioned it, everybody was watching my channel. And I was really excited because I was making a little bit of money from YouTube and I could support myself and, and it started my career and I couldn't have been happier. But the saddest thing to ever happen to me was about to happen. I got a phone call from the hospital and they told me that my mother was very, very sick. I came to visit her and while I was there, she died. And this made me sadder than I had ever, ever been. And I really didn't know what to do with myself. So that Christmas, I made plans to kill myself. But I didn't. I didn't because of my friend Adam. I didn't because of YouTube. I didn't because of you. And I decided to stick it out, even though I really didn't know why. But life has a way of working out. Because I met this redheaded girl 
who saw my videos and she was really sad too because she had just buried her best friend and she had just buried her brother. And we started talking and it was awesome. We were really interested in each other but um, her life was complicated and my life was complicated and we were just too far apart. And we didn't think we could make it work and that kind of sucked. But you know, they say never say never. Life has a way of surprising you. Uh, eventually we managed to work it out and that red-headed girl moved down here to live with me. And we've been together now for three years. We're in love and I'm happier now than I've ever been. And she's helped me do all these great things like travel the country again and lose weight and she's encouraged me to make more and more YouTube fans and more and more friends on YouTube and I'm getting bigger and stronger and healthier and occasionally some guy comes along and calls me fat but we don't care because he's an asshole and I just keep working harder and harder every day and for some reason this YouTube thing just doesn't seem to want to stop and I hope it never does. And because this girl has made me so happy and such a better person, I asked her to marry me. And inexplicably, she said yes. And that made me really happy. And you know, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I might get sick again, or maybe you guys are going to stop watching my channel, or maybe my fiancé will decide she doesn't want to marry me. And that would make me really sad. And Maybe I'd go crazy like my family did. But one thing is for certain, right here, right now, in this moment of time, I'm happier than I've ever been. And I owe all of that to you for watching my videos, for sharing them, for subscribing, for being part of my life. You've given me everything that sad little boy ever wanted. And I love you for it. Thank you. And I really mean it too. I. You've given me everything I ever dreamt of, everything I ever wanted, just with a click of a mouse, just by watching my videos. I owe you everything. I owe you my life.